Hi everybody. I uh, wanted to show a quick installation video of our newest unit here. This is a dual O2 enhancer plus map enhancer. And this unit goes under the hood. It's installed under the hood. This is what it looks like. It's been coated with a waterproof film so that you can install it under the hood and if it gets wet or some salt on it from the road or stuff like that, it's not going to uh, damage the unit or cause it to malfunction. This is the wiring code. I hope you can see this clearly. It starts out red, which is the positive 12 volt power supply to the unit. And we suggest that you hook this up to a switched circuit, such as the uh, fuel pump cir circuit. Uh, this is the vehicle ground, should be grounded to the engine block or the battery ground terminal. This is the ECU wire, which goes from the MAP sensor to the ECU. That's red. The next one is black. That comes from the MAP sensor to the enhancer. The next one is brown. That would come from the O2 sensor the signal goes into the enhancer here. So O2 sensor signal from the O2 sensor to the enhancer. The next one is blue. Blue goes from the enhancer to the computer from this same O2 sensor. And then white and yellow. White is again from another O2 sensor signal into the unit. Yellow signal out of the unit to the ECU from the same O2 sensor is this one here. Uh, before they're shipped, I set the O2 sensors, enhancers, and the map so that you really don't need to mess with them too much. You don't need to touch them. However, your vehicle may need to be tweaked a little tiny bit. I wouldn't turn the map up too high or uh, it's not going to work properly in the city or if you turn it too low, it won't work properly on the highway. So I have it set pretty much where you want it. But if you feel the need to mess around with it, go right ahead. But uh, I suggest you leave the settings where they are. Different vehicles will need the O2 sensors tweaked a little bit. But I like to start out a little bit low and uh, see where your vehicle goes from there. If you get great results, you just leave it alone. If you don't get great results, then we can tweak it a little tiny bit. I install these crimp connectors because they're very good. They make a good connection. They're easy to use, easy to install. You don't need to solder anything. And most uh, wire uh, strippers here have in the front wire nippers or cutters. And then there are two little notches which are used for crimps. And these can be used to crimp this crimp connector closed on top of the wire. So what I would do is take a positive 12 volt, or in my case I, I'm going to use my power supply here, which is, my power supply is 10 volts, but it doesn't matter, this unit still works off of 10 volts as well as 12. And I'll put the power supply wire in. crimp the connector down. I crimp it pretty hard. Then it's done. It's making good connection. Next is the ground. You do that for the green. Now the LED is on, you know the power is coming to the unit. The next thing would be to hook up your uh, map wire. This is coming from the map sensor. So you can disconnect your map plug from your map sensor in the vehicle. Uh, after you've found the output signal wire, you cut the output signal wire and attach one wire lead from the plug coming from the map sensor and that comes to this black wire here. That's input into the enhancer. 
the red wire is going to the other half of the wire that you cut. So you have the map plug with the wire coming out, cut the wire, you have one half of the wire going to the plug, which goes to black, the other half of the wire is going to the computer, that goes to red. For the O2 sensor, we have uh, two wires for each O2 sensor. You find the O2 sensor signal wire, which is the wire that's fluctuating between 0.1 and approximately 0.9 volts. You cut that wire, and then the wire that's coming directly out of the O2 sensor itself, you're going to connect to the brown or the white one because there's two separate inputs here. Strip a little piece of wire, maybe a 3 eighths of an inch from the end of a piece of 22 gauge stranded wire. I use stranded wire because it's more flexible and it's more forgiving. It doesn't break as easy as solid core wire. So, we place it in there, crimp the connector, and now the, the wire is attached. Now how can we tell if this is working or not? Well, it's pretty simple. We can tap into these connectors quite easily. All you need is a pin like this and you can put it into the end of the connector here and if you wiggle it, it will stick. And now it's making connection with the metal inside because we haven't wrapped this with electrical tape or sprayed it with some kind of <coughs> liquid electrical tape or anything. And then all you have to do is take your voltmeter. I'm setting mine for 20 volts DC, which means it'll measure anything under 20 volts DC. And since we only need to volt measure about 1 volt DC, this will work. So I'm going to take the black lead, my voltmeter, put it on vehicle ground. I'm going to take the red lead from my voltmeter, and I'm going to put it on the, this is the O2 sensor signal coming in to the enhancer and if you can see it's pulsing between 0.18 and 0.86 then I'll take this pin and put it on the output signal which is going to be going to my uh, computer from this enhancer and I'll again stick the wire in there take the positive lead put it on that and the signal coming out right now is too high because I haven't calibrated this unit, but the signal coming out you can see is 1.66 to 0.97. So I'm just going to tune that down and all I have to do is find the potentiometer here and counterclockwise reduces voltage, clockwise increases voltage. So I'm going to reduce the voltage so that it's pulsing maybe 0.2 volts higher than the incoming. Incoming was 0.86 at the high point. I'm going to make it 1.06, 1.07. And you can go back and check again, check the input signal, and see what it's pulsing. Because <coughs> I'm just using a simulator here. But if you're actually on the vehicle, and you tune uh, your EV or your enhancer until the, the signal is 0.2 volts higher, the actual incoming voltage will go down just because the car is automatically leaning the mix. And that's all you do and, and, and uh, to hook up the unit. You would go and attach another wire to this output and lead it to the, the uh, computer. And then you do the same for the other two O2 signal wires. And it's quite simple. You can wire tie this to a hose or to a wire harness somewhere in your um, engine compartment um, away from the wheel well or somewhere where it's going to get totally soaked and away from the engine block where it would get up to 400 degrees. You don't want that to happen but you can mount this about five inches from the engine block anywhere in the engine compartment. It'll stay cool. It'll work. You don't have to worry about it. It's a set it and forget it unit and um, it has this little LED on it so that you know it's operational just in case you think something's wrong with the unit or and maybe that it's not working. You just have to take a look at it and if the LED's on you know that it's getting power. And that's all there is to it. This here is my new 
a 25 plate dry cell. I got this from a company called HHO Green Machine. It's a 25 plate dry cell and um, I was reluctant to buy a dry cell but this one here really does put out a lot more hydrogen than my uh, other tube cell. It puts out about 1.7 liters per minute um, at just under 20 amps. So that's very, very good compared to my other one, which was 1.1 liters a minute at about 22 amps. So I uh, finally knuckled under and got a, an HHO green machine um, dry, uh, dry cell. And this will be going into a vehicle very, very soon. Thanks so much for listening. Have a good day.